Okay guys, today we're going to learn about SystemI Navigator. SystemI Navigator is just a utility which is used to access the objects that you have compiled and created uh, using the STR PDM. One of the ways to access them and enter data in them is through the DFU utility. Another way to access them and enter data in them is through a SystemI Navigator. Even though SystemI Navigator is to be replaced with a different tool, which we're going to talk about in a different video, but this tool is still in use. But IBM is planning on retiring it with a different tool, which is, which is a web-based tool, so that all you need is a web browser to access that. And, and, and the look and feel is very similar to the SystemI Navigator, but it's far more powerful tool. So anyway, so to get started with SystemI Navigator, it's located for you in the IBM Software folder and then you double click to open SystemI Navigator. Now when you open SystemI Navigator, if it's not already connected to the server, you may have to establish a connection. And in order to establish a connection on the toolbar, you're going to use this icon that is located right underneath the file menu. So you click on Add Connection, you provide the name of the server that you need to get connected to, and then you simply click Next and Finish. As a result, you're going to get what I see over here, deathstar.gtc.edu. Now, in order to log in, I need to expand the deathstar, so it right away asks me, who are you? So I need to provide my user information, and when I do so, it lets me log in. Once I'm in the system, I can expand on databases, and then I can expand on schemas. Now, just in case, if you do not see yourself over here in the list of the schemas, you can certainly go in the schemas, right-click on schemas, and then click on Select Schemas to Display. Once this dialog box shows up, then over here, under Enter Schema Names, you can enter your schema that you would like to add and simply click the Add button. Upon clicking the Add button, you will notice that this schema will appear in this list over here. And then upon clicking OK, you will notice that now that schema will appear right here in this list. OK, so now that you are inside the schema, you open your schema, which is your user profile, uh, the objects that are part of your user profile. And then you're going to go under Tables because that's where all the physical files come in. Now, by default, things are automatically um, in the ascending order of the name, but you can certainly change them by the last altered. So if I click on it a couple times, I can basically get the last altered object, which we created was a plant. So as I right-click on the plant, I can go under Description. And this will going to show me that this is a physical file. If this says table over here, that means it's a table. So it does differentiate between physical files and tables, even though they're all stored under tables. Now, I can certainly go under plan and go under definition. And this will going to give me the definition, which treats it sort of kind of like a table, but it knows. I showed you it's not a table. So we're going to give you the list of the columns, the field names, the field types, the field length, and the whole nine yards. Okay? Now, besides that, you can right-click on it, and then you can go say, I want to view the content. So we're going to show you the data that has been entered in this so if you notice, we use DFU and we entered the data through DFU. So if the price was $3.99, we would, we would enter 0399. So it would not accept the period from us. Anyway, in this environment, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about not entering the period. Uh, and you don't even have to worry about the trailing, uh, the, the leading zeros to fill up the entire space. Anyway. To enter data, you right-click on the object that you want to enter data into, and this can be done with tables as well as physical files. It's the same process. You click on Edit Contents. Now, once you are in Edit Contents, you can increase the size of the box. And you can click under Rows, and you can say, I want to insert the data. So now you enter a value here, the name of the, of the, of the plant name, uh, flower name, whatever you want to call it. Um, Jasmine uh, price. The price is let's say three six fifty six. Now, if I have a trend of entering my data in all uppercase, I must follow the trend because the character data is always case sensitive. So I have to be careful the case that I use. 
Okay, so now when I press enter, it right away gives me this warning. So what this warning is all about, it's saying that your table is not journaled. Of course it's not a table, but generally, why would you journal anything? Well, in databases, we journal tables so that uh, when we're using triggers, we can use before triggers and after triggers in them. When we're using save points, rollbacks, and all of that stuff, then the table should be journaled. So it keeps a copy of before change and after change so that you can go back and forth, especially a great thing to do in a transaction processing system so that in case if any of the step fails, all steps should be rolled back. But for now, we're going to say, yeah, that's fine. We know it's not journaled. Uh, just let me save the changes. Yeah. So in any given session of data entry, you're only going to give you that warning once. So if I go ahead and start inserting another plant here, and then I press enter, it will not going to give me that warning because it already knows that I've done it once. Now if I want to delete, I can simply click and then I go under rows and I can say I want to delete this row and the row gets deleted. If I want to delete multiple rows, I can actually select them by pressing and holding the left click on the mouse and dragging through and multiple rows are selected and then I can go under rows and say delete. So once you delete it, it's gone. You can't retrieve it back. So now let me close this and this basically shows you how you can use Systemine Navigator uh, while you are uh, working with your objects, how you can add data to them, how you can remove data from them, and how you can view data in them. Well, hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching.